The Netherlands South African Railway Company or NZASM also sometimes called ZASM in South Africa was a railway company established in 1887. The company was based in Amsterdam and Pretoria, and operated in the South African Republic during the late 19th century. At the request of Tsar President Paul Kruger, the NZASM constructed a railway line between Pretoria and Lourenço Marques in Portuguese East Africa now Maputo in Mozambique. <laughs> <laughs> Background The British conquered the then Dutch Cape Colony in 1806. The new administration was not universally accepted by the Dutch colonists and after the 1830s thousands of Dutch-speaking colonists called Boers migrated to the interior of southern Africa. This migration, known as the Great Trek, resulted in the establishment of 14 independent republics. By the mid-19th century these republics had merged into the two larger republics, the South African Republic and the Republic of the Orange Free State. The British Empire eventually recognised the independence of these republics in 1852 and 1854. The relationship between the British and the Boers remained strained throughout the 19th century, especially as a result of the First Boer War 1880 Both republics were located in the interior of what is now South Africa, with no route to the coast that did not pass through the British-held Cape Colony and Colony of Natal. Paul Kruger, president of the Tsar, decided that an alternative trade route to the ocean was a priority for the Tsar. The Witwatersrand gold rush after 1886 resulted in the rapid industrialization of the Tsar, making access to the ocean even more important, and allowed the suddenly cash-flush republic to invest in large-scale infrastructure projects. It will set an indelible seal upon the freedom, the independence, the nationality of the republics, and will put an effectual barrier on the extension of British dominion over the Vaal and Orange rivers, it will make it perfectly immaterial to us whether the Liberals or Conservatives in England, or Milteno or Paterson at the Cape, are in power. Establishment. In 1874 the Volksrad of the Tsar decided that a railway would be built connecting the Tsar with Lourenço Marques on Delagoa Bay in Portuguese East Africa now Maputo in Mozambique. A commission was established in 1874 to create a plan for the construction of this railway. After initial success in raising capital and acquiring a railway concession from the Portuguese government, the project was stalled by the outbreak of the First Boer War. After the end of the war in 1881 the project was resumed, this time with renewed enthusiasm due to the threat of British domination over the Boer republics. In 1884 a concession was granted to a group of Dutch investors, and this was followed by the official establishment of the Netherlands South African Railway Company on 21 June 1887 in Amsterdam in the Netherlands, funded by Dutch, German, and Boer investors. The Pretoria – Delagoa Bay Line, with a length of 562 km ca. 350 miles, was opened on 6 November 18 1994 and is still in use today. The railway company employed about 3,000 people. Of these, about 1,500 were employed in the construction of the Pretoria – Delagoa Bay Line. It adopted the 3 feet 6 in 1,067 mm Cape gauge of the neighbouring Cape Government Railways. On 19 February 1896, a train loaded with dynamite was struck by a shunter while being unloaded. The resulting Bramfontein explosion was one of the largest artificial non-nuclear explosions in history, resulting in more than 70 deaths and 200 injuries. 
In 1897, a new station was constructed in Johannesburg. The building was constructed in 1895 in Rotterdam and was used in the Amsterdam exhibition before being dismantled and shipped to Johannesburg, where it was rebuilt in 1897. Although Johannesburg Park Station has twice been reconstructed, the 1897 building was preserved and moved a short distance to Newtown where it still stands, unused, today. By 1899, the NZASM had constructed 1,147 kilometers ca. 712 miles of railway. Topic: The Rantrum Line. As a result of the rapid development of the goldfields on the Witwatersrand in the 1880s and the demand for coal by the growing industry, on 20 July 1888 the Tsar government granted a concession to the NZASM to construct a 16 miles 26 km railway line from Johannesburg to Boxburg. The line was opened on 17 March 1890, with the first train being hauled by a 14-tonner locomotive. It became known as the Randtrum, even though it was actually a railway in every aspect and not singularly dedicated to tram traffic. This was the first working railway line in the Transvaal. The concession was extended the following year to continue the line eastward to Springs, where coal was known to exist, and westward via Ruderport to Krugersdorp. The entire 49 mile line was opened to traffic on 10 February 1891. In 1889 and 1890, the NZASM obtained three tramway steam locomotives with an O4OT wheel arrangement for use on the Rantrum line. Since the railway classified its locomotives according to their weight, these tank locomotives were known as the 10 tonners. As the Rantrum line was expanded to the west and east to become the reef line between Ruderport and Springs, the 14 tonners remained in service on that line, even though their range of operation was somewhat limited by the small coal and water carrying capacities. The first locomotive, No. 1, named Transvaal, entered service on 18 July 1889. It hauled the first train on the Rantrum line when it was opened on 17 March 1890, and was retired in December 1903, by which time it had covered a distance of 113,309 miles By 1899 the Rantrum line had expanded to a length of 82 km ca. 51 miles. Topic: Pretoria Delagoa Bay Line, Ooster Line. In order to have an outlet to a harbour, a railway line from Delagoa Bay in Portuguese East Africa to Pretoria had been proposed to the Volksrad of the Tsar by President F. T. Burgers as far back as 1872. The Portuguese supported the idea, since it would open a trade route from Portuguese East Africa into the interior. In 1883, Major Joachim Machado was sent to the Transvaal to report on a proposed route through the Comati River and Crocodile River valleys towards the Highveld and Pretoria. The resulting agreement was for the Portuguese to construct the section from Delagoa Bay to the border at Camataport, while the Tsar would be responsible for the continuation of the line to Pretoria. The Portuguese line from Delagoa Bay had already reached the border on 14 December 1887, but the first train from Delagoa Bay only entered Camataport on 1 July 1891, when the NZASM's contractors completed the bridge across the Comati River. The line from Camataport to Nelsprite was completed by 20 June 1892. 
Waterville Boven was reached on 20 June 1894 and Balmoral, near Whitbank, on 20 October 1894, connecting with the line which had simultaneously been built eastwards from Pretoria. The construction of the railway line from Delagoa Bay to Pretoria was beset with difficulties, both in terms of disease and engineering. Malaria claimed many lives among the construction crews, and some of the terrain was mountainous. In the Alansprite Valley, where the river formed a 295-foot-high waterfall, the adjacent cliffs presented a natural barrier to the continuation of the railway from the eastern Transvaal Lowveld up to the Transvaal Highveld. In terms of construction, the climb up the escarpment was arguably the most difficult section to be encountered by the railway builders on the route. When the line reached Waterville on the, they had a choice between a lengthy detour with sharp curves and costly deep cuttings, embankments and viaducts, to comply with the agreed-upon gradient of 1 in 50 2%, or a shorter 4.5-mile long section, which would entail a gradient of 1 in 20 5% over a distance of 2.1 miles in one place, as well as a 2 133-yard long meters tunnel, the shorter and steeper route was selected. While a gradient of 1 in 20 is not insurmountable by light trains with orthodox adhesion locomotives, safety and economical considerations led to the decision to install a rack track on the section up the escarpment between Waterville Onda and Waterville Boven. The rack track was built to the Riggenbach system which was in use on European mountain railways, with the rack laid between the rails, the line, also known as the Oosterline East Line from Pretoria to Lorenzo Marques had a total length of 562 km ca, 350 miles, of which 472 km ca, 293 miles formed part of the Oosterline. The full line followed the following route, asterisk Pretoria start Bronkhurst Sprite East Rand Middleburg Waterville Boven Nelsprite Kamataport last stop in South Africa border crossing between South Africa and Mozambique Resano Garcia first stop in Mozambique Moamba Lorenzo Marques Maputo since 1975 Maputo Bay end in the above list only the major settlements on the line are named the station names are not given The line was officially inaugurated on the 1st of January 1895 Today the line runs through the South African provinces of Gauteng and Mpumalanga these two provinces, which previously made up the Transvaal province, contain part of the territory of the former Tsar along with Limpopo. After the completion of the Pretoria-Maputo line, a second, much shorter line was laid down between Pretoria and Johannesburg. It adopted the 3 feet 6 in 1067 mm of the neighboring Cape Government Railways. topic other lines In addition to the Randtram and Pretoria Delagoa Bay lines the NZASM operated another four lines Carpmoden Barberton a 55 kilometers CA 34 miles sideline of the Ooster line Zauderlane South Line, intended to connect to the Cape Colony via the Orange Free State, ran from Pretoria, Carlfontein, Zuerfontein, Alansfontein, Johannesburg, Vereniging, Viljoensdrift, border with the Orange Free State. The total line from Pretoria to Cape Town was 1,674 kilometres (ca. 1,040 miles), of which 125 kilometres (ca. 78 miles was controlled by the NZASM. 
Zaud Oosterline southeast line, intended to connect to the natal colony, ran from Alandsfontein, Johannesburg, Heidelberg, Standerton, Charleston, Volksrust border with natal colony. The total line from Pretoria to Durban was 812 kilometers ca. 505 miles, of which 256 kilometers ca. 160 miles were part of the Zaud Oosterline. Zaud Westerline, Southwest Line, intended to connect to the Orange Free State, ran from Krugersdorp, Pochefstrom, Klerksdorp, border with the Orange Free State, with a length of 156 kilometers, ca. 97 miles. A one-kilometer track at Alandsfontein near Johannesburg provided a connection between the Zauderlane, the Zaud Oosterline, and the Zaud Westerline. The South African War to the Present In 1899 shortly after the outbreak of the South African War, also known as the Second Boer War 1899 the government of the Tsar exercised its rights in accordance to the concession granted to the NZASM to place the company under government control. Towards the end of the war, the company, along with the Rail Company of the Orange Free State OVSM, was placed under military control by the British, and in 1904 the NZASM and the OVSM were merged into the Central South African Railways. After protracted negotiations, NZASM shareholders and creditors were given some compensation for debts and losses incurred by the company being seized by the British. The NZASM was formally dissolved in 1908, and the final financial statements were presented to shareholders in 1909. The company also published a book, In Memoriam, about the history of the NZASM in 1910. The money from the company's liquidation was used to establish the Zaud Afrikaanse Stichting Modeland in 1908. The ZASM is an organization dedicated to the advancement of cultural and economic ties between the Netherlands and South Africa. The ZASM also purchased a building in Amsterdam to house the organization's archives and collections, including a part of the NZASM's archives. This building is now used by a variety of organizations under the common banner Zoud Africa House, South Africa House. A great deal of the NZASM's infrastructure including bridges, drains, houses, and stations still exists and in many cases is still owned and actively used by Transnet. Several of the NZASM locomotives have survived and now form part of the Outaniqua Transport Museum's collection. In 1916, shortly after the establishment of the Union of South Africa, the Central South African Railways was merged with the railways of the former English Cape, Cape Government Railways and Natal, Natal Government Railways colonies, resulting in the establishment of the South African Rail and Harbour Administration or Spornet. In 1980, Spornet was renamed to Transnet, and it was granted company status in 1990. The NZASM archives may be found in the South African National Archives in South Africa, the Dutch National Archives in the Netherlands, and in the archives of the Zoud Afrika House and the Dutch Economic History Archive NIHA, both in Amsterdam. The NZASM photos in the collection of the Zoud Afrika House have also been digitized and may be viewed online. NZASM-related archival material may also be found in various other archives, including the National Archives of the United Kingdom. See also History of rail transport in Mozambique List of NZASM locomotives Rail transport in South Africa